It should all start with one question, one very simple question. What life is your player going to have during your game? It's, it's that simple and it's that effective. Your players get to live the life of someone. God of War is such an amazing example. Whilst you're playing that game, everything, and I mean everything from the menu to the combat to the walking and the cutscenes, everything makes you feel like you are the God of War. Same thing for absolutely every single successful game that's ever come out. Red Dead Redemption 2, same thing with Tetris. You are part of that universe ever since you start, you, you press start to when you're turning off your console in that period, you are a part of that, you know, Tetris verse as, as absurd as it might sound, but everything in that game is part of the same universe. This is what makes a game great. And this is where you need to start when you're building off your dream game. What is the player's life during the game? Who is player when player plays game? That is the first question. Are they a god of war? Are they someone living out the American dream? Are they a legendary commander in charge of a squadron? If you don't have an answer to this question, you will keep building without a sense of direction. You, will, you The whole process of building the game from the beginning to the end just will be chaotic. The most awful thing is that you will never know. Have I done enough? Is my game good enough? Am I con Because you don't know what to compare it to. You're gonna start comparing it to similar games in that genre, but that's not how you should be doing it. You should only compare your game to the experience that you want to offer the player. Not if it's like uh, some other game in the genre, no, 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 no. The only metric is, does it provide the experience that you said it would provide? Because that's what people have an issue with. If you're telling them, hey, I'm making this game and you're going to feel like a god of war, but then they start playing the game and it, the menus are off, the music is off. They're not going to tell... Some players are going to tell you, yes, this thing is off, is off, is off. But most players are just going to say, eh, I don't like it. I don't feel it that well. Because you promised them an experience and you're not giving out that experience. This is something even AAA studios struggle with. If they don't offer the experience that they said they would offer, a game, no matter how big it is, no matter how many billions it has invested in it, will fail. If you don't ask yourself this question when you're starting off, and if you don't hold this answer from this question all throughout a development project, the development of the project, you're going to have issues with it. You're going to have a very difficult development and game might not be too appealing to the players. And the best way to nail down what I call the ethos, the answer to this question I call the ethos of the game, is to do it with one sentence. You just have one sentence. The player is... Insert your answer here. The player is the God of War. The player is living out the American dream, just like in every single GTA game. And by the way, just like in Red Dead Redemption 2, because <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2 is the American dream from the 1800s, right? So Rockstar, as a studio, has made games that are all about the American dream in different time periods with different, you know, uh, settings. Simple as that. Uh, the player is a commander of a special unit, XCOM. The player is a world leader, civilization. You know? If you ask yourself this, then you'll have a very, uh, you'll have a much easier time at figuring out the ethos of your game. And you should take time with this step. Take some time, think about it very well, because what you decide here will influence the years of your life to come because that's, you know, when you're gonna develop your game. There's no real going back from this decision. You can adapt a little bit, but once you decide the player is going to be this, it's very hard to come back from that. It's, it's not really possible. It's not really feasible. And that's extremely, extremely important. This is the most important thing when you're starting off to make a dream game. It's an experience. Think about it, not in terms of marketing, not in terms of numbers, not in terms of, think about offering a player, the player, an engaging experience, an engaging life. What life are you giving them? And once you've gotten your ethos, once you've gotten the answer to this question, then you make your small game design document or big game design document, whatever floats your boat. I'd advise you to go with smaller. When in terms, when it, in terms of design documents, smaller and more concise, the better, because it forces you to, uh, you know, to say exactly what's important. The bigger a, a design document is, the more you go into the details, the less you really know what you need to be doing, because it's hundreds of pages long. Once you have your design document. 
then you build the core experience. What is the core experience? In XCOM, you order troops around. In Civilization, you build cities and order troops around. In um, God of War, you walk and you fight. So the very basic core system that allows you to do these things. And from then on out, you build the vertical slice. Now, I've made a few videos on this. I'll uh, link them in the cards below. And then once you've gotten your vertical slice, you just expand and build it horizontally. And in a few years, bang. You've got yourself something that is truly, truly incredible if you start with, these, with this ethos. Let this ethos, let this vision of what you want to offer your players be the light that guides you throughout the development process. Now get out there and let your love for making games flow through you and make something really incredible for us all to play. Have fun.